How does a cell make another cell? It does it by a process called mitosis. Mitosis is an asexual reproduction where a single cell divides into two identical cells. However, not all soma or body cells undergo mitosis at the same rate and some don't even reproduce ever again. As an example, skin, blood forming cells, and intestinal cells reproduce constantly, whereas muscle cells are every few years, except for the cardiac or heart muscle. The cardia muscle will not reproduce once it's damaged. And like the heart, the brain and spinal nerve cells don't reproduce once they have been damaged or destroyed either. Now that's something to think about, especially when it comes to taking care of yourself. So, we're going to look at the process of mitosis as a play. First, let's look at the cast members. The nucleus, chromatin, chromosomes, chromatids, centrioles, centrosome, spindle fibers, centromeres, cytoplasm, and last but not least, the two new identical cells. The rest of the organelles, including the nucleus, disappear during cell division. Before we get started, here's a little backstory to catch you up to speed. The nucleus, which is the brain of the cell, has already initiated the process. Prior to the actual cell division, the nucleus has commanded the chromatin material, or DNA, to condense and organize itself into chromosomes. 46 of them to be exact. Now that we're ready, we'll begin with the actual cell division process called mitosis. The centrioles, which are found in a specific area of the cell called the centrosome, follow direct orders from the nucleus. The centrioles move out of the centrosome and begin a road trip to the opposite ends of the cell. Meanwhile, the chromosomes have been ordered to duplicate themselves. Once again, science doesn't quite understand how this happens yet, but maybe soon they will. If everything goes well, the 46 chromosomes will clone themselves and change their stage name to chromatids. Unlike the centrioles, the chromatids, now all 92 of them, will find their way to the center stage of the cell to put on a performance. Much like the river dance or a line dance or whatever that is. Anyway, the chromatids line up in the center of the cell. Meanwhile, the centrioles, who have finally reached their destination at the opposite ends of the cell, will throw out spindle fibers like streamers that attach to each of the chromatids at the centromere. Centromere is a structure by which the duplicated chromatids connect to each other. Like Siamese twins, the chromatids are joined. Now, the grand finale, the tug of war. Once the spindle fibers have attached to the centromeres, the centrioles will pull the chromatids apart by pulling or retracting the spindle fibers back into themselves. Each centriole will pull 46 chromatids to its side of the cell. As the chromatids separate, the cytoplasm begins to split through the middle of the cell and the cell membrane starts to come around to enclose the two newly made cells. The chromatids are now chromosomes, the chromosomes become chromatin, and return to the nucleus. The centrioles return to the centrosome, and all of the organelles that have temporarily disappeared now return. Let's do a quick review. The nucleus, a mass in the cytoplasm, often called the brain of the cell because it controls many cell activities and is important in cell division. Chromatin, 
a thread-like structure in the nucleus of a cell. It changes to 46 chromosomes. Chromosomes. Organized DNA formed by the chromatin. Chromatids. Once the 46 chromosomes duplicate, or clone, they become the 92 chromatids. The centrioles. On a mission to retrieve the chromatids and create a new cell. The centrosome. Located in the cytoplasm and near the nucleus. It contains two centrioles which are important during cell reproduction. Spindle fibers. Shot out from the centrioles to attach to the centromere and separate the chromatids. The centromeres. Part of the chromosome that links the sister chromatids together. Thanks for watching. And be sure to check out our next video on mapping the body.